Hello everybody, welcome to the Data Platform Virtual Summit, uh, Virtual Summit 2022. My name is Gethin Ellis and I'd like to welcome you to my talk called Build a Business, Using Your Technical Skills to Build Your Own Business. Uh, you can see there, um, I'm a consultant and trainer running my own business here in the UK uh, and you can check out my website at gethinellis.com. Now, before we get started, I'd like to just give a special thanks to the sponsors of this event, which are uh, Microsoft, they offer a lot of support to the Data Platform Summit, uh, the Data Platform Geeks and SQL Server Geeks uh, communities, and a big thank you as well to the organizer of this summit, uh, Amit and his team. Uh, I've done a sterling job once again, a fabulous job once again, in putting this all together and making sure that uh, uh, the event runs without a hitch. Uh, it takes some organizing, I'm sure. So a big thank you to them for their efforts and contributions in putting this together. So let me tell you a little bit of information about me. As I said, my name is Gethin Ellis and I'm a, a Data Azure and Power Platform Consultant and Trainer based in the UK. I've been, um, over, over the years since I left university, I've had a plethora of different jobs. I started out, I was actually working on the service desk, but I ended up writing some SQL queries to extract some information from our help desk system so we could see how busy the various teams in the IT department were. From there, kind of, uh, I was doing some work for the local government in the UK and from there I kind of uh, moved into uh, web development. Uh, I was writing in classic ASP, so I'm showing my age a little bit how far back uh, we are going with SQL Server on the back end. And at the time, the UK government were going through their e-government initiative. So they were trying to digitise and bring online all of uh, the resources and services that they offered to members of uh, the UK, the UK population, UK citizens. Those applications quickly took off and became um, very important. So then all of a sudden, availability, performance, security, they all became a big deal for those databases and those apps. So I managed to learn some DBA skills, database administration skills um, in, in, in that area. So I kind of became an accidental DBA. And from there, I, that, I had the skills and experience then to uh, apply and be successful in getting my first uh, uh, my first proper database administration job with uh, South Wales Police, a large police force in the UK. And I worked there for um, three or four years before I started my own consultancy and training practice, which uh, goes under the name of, it, it trades under GRE Solutions, but all the website, all the material you will find under gethinellis.com. Um, I've been running that for the last 15 years. And when we first set out and started, and, and, and as we go through this talk today, I will Give you some more information on on how that started for me and how that worked and how things went for me as i was going along um, <coughs> but my, my, my i guess my the, the main sort of work i was doing when i first started would have been sql server upgrades upgrading sql server 2000 to 2005 and then sql server 2005 to 2008 my business started in, in sort of 2007 so i've been running it for the last 16, 17 years. Over that time, our offerings of some have stayed the same, some have, have, have expanded. So we still do the upgrades. We also do performance tuning. We do health checks. We do managed services. We provide training in uh, the data platform area. Um, and, 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 and yeah, we, we, we deliver quite a lot of training. So there's kind of two strands to the business. Now, I'll just make this available to you here. You can see there I've got my email address on the slide. If you have any questions on anything I talk about today or something resonates with you and you want to talk about it afterwards, obviously join the Q&A session at the end, but please do um, drop me an email. I am gethin at gethinalice.com. I, I, I write a little bit about building a business as well. You'll find that at gethinalice.com, um, build hyphen a hyphen business. And then if, if you're looking to build a business, I would imagine you're active on LinkedIn, please do feel free to reach out and connect. If you're in this talk today and would like to build your network and expand your network, please reach out and talk to me. Over the last couple of years, or last few years, since I started my business, last 15 years, I've written a couple of books and several commercial training courses. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I have been since 2015. Uh, and earlier this year, I was awarded the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Award uh, as well for my community contributions to uh, the data platform community. So I'm very proud of that too. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? I guess 
have you ever wanted to run your own business? Have you ever wanted to work for yourself? Have you ever wanted to set your own agenda? Select the projects you work on, even that the clients that you work for, then perhaps this session is for you. In this session, we'll discuss what it takes for a person with outstanding technical skills to build a product or service around those skills to become a marketable product you can sell to clients. Okay, and if you can do that, you can build a business for yourself. To build a business, let's say you're looking at IT contracting or consulting, you are going to need excellent technical skills. That is a given, right? That's probably not even half the battle though. You will need to build and describe a product and service that actually solves a problem for the clients. You're gonna to need to do some product development. You will need to build a brand around your product and service so people are aware that it exists. So you are gonna to need to do marketing and promote your, uh, your, your product and service and your business. You're gonna to need to talk to potential clients and talk to your clients to understand the problems they are experiencing and then be able to communicate with them and explain to them how your product and service will help solve your problem. Right? So in effect, that's gonna be sales. You are gonna to have to do sales if you want to build a business. Right? You're likely to need to produce some sales documentation or sales collateral as the salespeople like to call it, that evidences how the services and products you supply solve clients' problems. Right? And you also need to manage the business. You need to manage your time, you need to manage resources, Make sure you deliver absolute maximum value to your existing clients while continuing to find new clients and keep that sales pipe full. Now, it can be running your own business and building your own business can be a, a rewarding and fun way to work if you do it right. And in this session, we'll show you how you can approach starting your own IT consulting or training business. And hopefully we can help you build a successful business of your own. So my talk, build a business, all right? My talk's called build a business, welcome to it. My name is Gethin, as you know, and I'm gonna share with you a story about Berry Wand, all right? And Berry's journey to building a business using her tech and data skills. So this is not really a technical talk. The technical assumes are gonna be assumed, all right? It's about sharing our experience of building a technology and consulting business over the last 15 years. So I'll give you a little bit of information about Berry herself. Right? Berry has got a very, very technical background, working with SQL Server, working with the data platform. She enjoys her job. She works for a large public sector organization in South Wales, and she's been doing that for a few years. She works in a very good team. She works with, uh, the organization's fabulous. She really enjoys working there. The organization, South Wales Police. And she gets to work on some really interesting projects. Now in her team, which is aptly named the database team, there are basically two levels of seniority. You've got a senior officer and you've got a principal officer, right? an SO or a PO. The principal officer and the senior officer would do very similar work, but I guess uh, that the, the principal officer would get paid a fraction more in terms of salary. If the SO is paid a salary of X, the PO would get paid say X plus 5,000. Right? The PO will be the official technical lead for the technologies being used in the team. Now, Barry's an SO. That doesn't mean she's not taking the technical lead on things. It just means she's not really getting paid uh, to be the principal officer or the PO. Now, this is the public sector in the UK. Right? Therefore, there is a limited budget. Right? And there are no opportunities for Barry at the moment to get promoted. Right? Um, she'd like to earn a little bit more money or was perhaps thinking about earning a little bit, little bit more money. But... Um, Perhaps she's not feeling as, as pushed as she could be, and she'd like to have the responsibility for taking the lead on things in terms of the technology. But she really loves where she works. So changing jobs from one organization to the other perhaps isn't the most appealing to Barry. But where she is, unfortunately, unless someone leaves and her colleagues are really good people, they've all worked for the organization for 20 years, and they've probably got another 20 or 30 years left until they retire. There's not gonna be a real opportunity for promotion in the technical space unless some funding is secured and finding funding in the UK public sector is not always the easiest thing. Uh, it's not always the easiest thing to do. So if she wants to earn some more money and take on that responsibility and build her leadership skills. She's either gonna have to uh, change career path, right? The path doesn't involve technology at the organization she works with so she could get promoted into 
management levels or um, uh, other areas of the uh, the IT department, um, and it might involve managing people. Now that might not be something that Barry is overly keen on doing. So. <coughs> Uh, Barry, with her background, she's got a degree in business and uh, a master's in computer science. She really enjoys the technical aspect of her job. Right? So perhaps contracting or consulting is calling for Barry. Right? She's always dreamed of running her own business. Right? From her degree in business and then her master's in computer science, starting a contracting or consulting company was always something she wanted to do. When she came out of university, her first job was in the technical space and she's built and grown on those technical skills over the years. Right? She really enjoys working in tech and she, she has a desire and a want to remain technical. She doesn't have any desire to be a, a manager of people, but she's quite happy to lead the way on technology. And yes, she does want to earn a little bit more money. Not that that's a given when you start your own business. If you, if you do contracting or consulting, it's not a guarantee you're going to earn more money. But there is an opportunity for you to earn more if you approach it right. Now, Barry, she loves writing. She loves writing blogs. She loves presenting. She loves teaching people about technology and, and, and teaching those technical skills. And she, she's had some recognition already from her peers, the lunch and learns they've done at work. And she started her own blog. And, 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 and people have been commenting on, uh, on how good the content is she has been, she's been creating. So, so with, 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 with these efforts of sharing what she knows, um, the, 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 a demand for her skills, she's showcasing, showcasing her skills, the, the, the contracting consulting opportunity is appealing. It's appealing to Barry. Right? And she's uncovered through her existing endeavours around writing her blog and presenting a couple of opportunities where she could have gone in and delivered um, a SQL Server upgrade for, for several clients. Right, and she's, she's got this opportunity. Now, the, the, the work she's been offered is an upgrade to SQL Server 2005. So she's moving from 2000 to 2005. So bear in mind that we're actually in the year 2007. Right, she's been offered a three month assignment to migrate a SQL Server instance and all everything that hangs off that as well. So it's not just a simple upgrade to SQL Server 2005. So there would be DTS to SSIS and analysis service to move and reporting services to do as well. In terms of the, uh, what the revenue would bring in for your business, the money, it's okay. It's, it's, a, it's an attractive option for Barry at that time. All right? In those three months, she would make half a year's salary. All right? So she's very, very tempted. But once this opportunity presents itself, Barry starts to have some nagging doubts. All right? So she's got a little bit of a problem. She's got this negative self-talk. She's starting to doubt herself. And once she started to say things in her head like, oh, you can't start your own business. You can't do this on your own. What are you going to do after this assignment is complete? This is just three months. You've got, you know, you've got a full-time permanent job where uh, you've got, you've got the security that comes with it. And she could be getting, you know, so she discusses this with friends and family and she might get some negative talk from those as well. It's like, oh, you've got a really good job. Why do you want to take this risk and start your own business? Why are you giving up that a great job that you've got um, to do this? And then Barry started to think, oh, I don't really know where to start. So Barry's not sure where to start, but don't worry, help is out there. From those doubts, come worries. The job security is a big deal. That's usually the biggest hurdle uh, for people who are trying to make that jump. It's like, I've got this permanent job now. How can I take that risk? Right. And then how do I find customers? How do I find clients and customers? How do I go about doing that? I'm not a salesperson. I'm a technical person. And in today's day and age, you know, people might be worried about the pandemic. Yes, it's led to a very uncertain time over the last few years, and hopefully we're at the end of it, but it's still out there. And with the pandemic and the fallout of that and other global events happening around the world, the inflationary pressures that the global economy is currently going through, there are, you know, there are economic factors that could be a worry. Right? But sales is the big one. How am I going to sell? Uh, how am I going to sell to people? I, you know, she, she, Barry's probably sat there. I'm not very good at sort of networking events and um, she would probably consider herself to be more on the um, introvert than the extrovert uh, scale. Well, she's probably towards the introvert side of the spectrum. And let's be honest, everyone sits on there somewhere. There's no one or the other. It's, it's a scale. 
right? But just remember, people on the introvert side can make good salespeople. But as it stands, Berry is now stuck. Does she follow her dream and start her business, or does she listen to the negative self-talk and doubts? So what is she going to do? Well, she meets a guy she runs into, she runs into us at GRE Solutions Limited. All right? We started our business in 2007. Right? And, and, and you know, this, this, is, this is my example. There are lots of really good tech folk out there and really good examples of tech folk out there start, starting a business for themselves and being very, very successful at it. Right? I'm sure there's a few people listening in here today that are doing, uh, they're doing okay. Um, I, I, I won't quote any examples, but I'll talk to you offline at the end if you want. We want me to give you give you some some other references of people who seem to have done um, a similar thing. Right now, GRE Solutions, my business, it's a small business. There's three or four of us. There's three now. There was four. Right, we've got a group of trusted associates that allow us to take on the bigger projects. Right, I, I, and we've done that over the last over the last fifteen years. And if I can do it, so can Barry. Right, put that into context. I started my 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 business in in two thousand and seven, literally two weeks before uh, the run on Northern Rock. So this is what kicked off the financial crisis in the UK. Right, GRE and GetInS.com grew throughout the financial crisis. We we got additional customers. Uh, we 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 kept bringing in the business, uh, and we survived and got through the the financial uncertainty that started in around about two thousand and seven and rumbled on for several years after. Then we got to Brexit and the Brexit vote in 2016 and all the uncertainty that brought and we continued to grow and continue to strive and we moved from one to two people at around about that point. Um, and then as we moved and moved towards Britain exiting the European Union uh, and the pandemic kicked in, we kind of, uh, we, we brought on, um, well, we, we've got a very trusted associate, a business partner that we work with quite extensively now and we hired a graduate to come and to come and help us. Um, so we continued to grow through the pandemic. We actually took on some staff members. Uh, Akima who joined us, she's got now, she's got a new job now and she's moved on. We haven't replaced her yet. But if, when I was starting out and I look back at all the sort of billable time and consulting, it's all about billable time. I've had one unbilled week in 15 years. And what I mean by that is in the, in, in the 15 years I've been doing this, or yeah, 15 years, uh, there's been one week where I was available to do work for someone and charge for it and I didn't have anybody to charge. That's one week in 15 years. So to put that into context of your um, uh, of your permanent job, the security I've got from running my business and, 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 and the work that I've brought in has, has meant that it has had very little impact uh, in, in, in running the business for myself. So some questions to ask yourself, all right? It, 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 you know, if I can do it, you can do it, all right? And there are people out there that will help you. People are always prepared to share their advice. But ask yourself some questions. What do you want your business to look like? All right. How is it going to look? Are you going to be a freelancer business? Are you going to have... Um, are you looking to scale? All right. And have that idea in your mind. It might be you want to take over the world and build this big uh, managed service company or this big consulting company with lots of... Lots of... <coughs> consultants working for you, going out and... Um, uh, 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 and, and, and delivering on the products and services you come up with. Um, but more importantly, if you, when you come to making this initial decision, because you're not going to go from zero to fifteen hundred in in three weeks, is what you need to get from it, so it's worthwhile for you and your family. Okay, what does that need to look like to provide you with the security that you need? What does it need? What needs to happen for it to be worthwhile? You, you know, taking that perceived risk of starting your own business. And then this question here is probably the most vital one. And it's probably the one that gets neglected the most. What will happen if you don't take this opportunity? Will you regret not doing it? Will you look back in 30 or 40 years time and go, I wish I'd taken that chance and, 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 and started my business? Um, I use my dad as an example here. My, my dad worked for the same company for a very long time, 40 years or so, and then just before he was due to retire, he uh, he's an electrician, my dad. Um, the, the business, um, they, they closed the, the South Wales plant and everyone at the, at the site got made redundant. My dad was just about to retire, but he wasn't ready to do it yet. 
And uh, so off the back of that, he said, oh, I'll just go and work for myself. There's plenty of work out there. And then he did that for another five or six years when he could have easily been retired because he enjoyed doing it. And he enjoyed running his business. And my mum always said, oh, we could have done this years ago. Right? But my dad did eventually take that step and he did get to do it. But think of the model, right? Uh, it might be a one-man band is uh, a one-person business is the right, a one-person consultancy is the right the right approach to you. It might be you want to scale. Understand which model fits best and understand uh, the repercussions that come uh, with the model that you aim for and what you need to do. And then as you go through answering these questions, it'll shape your business and give you an idea of the plan that you're um, uh, it'll give you an idea of the pl uh, of, of a plan that your business is going to look like and it'll help you uh, make that transition. So the first thing to do right, in, in, in making this decision is to address that, that negative self-talk that I talked about. Right? There is no failure, there's just feedback. Right? You're either going to win and be successful right, or you're going to learn from what has happened to you. Okay, and you see, to paraphrase the old Henry Ford uh, quote, if you think you can or you think you can't, either way you're probably right. right. If you think you can do it, you will be able to do it. If, you, if, you know, if you've got the attitude, I won't be able to do this, then I guarantee you won't be able to get there. But if you think you can, there's every chance you will make it. It is possible. You do have the ability. You do deserve the chance to start your own business, and it is very much worth it. So what is stopping you? Okay. But answering those questions I just spoke about, you're going to need a plan, right? If you want to want to understand something, act, start doing, right? Um, have a business plan. The business plan can help you manage the risk. It can help you identify and think about all the things that you need to consider before you go in and um, uh, uh, and start your business, right? So have a plan. Make it a flexible plan. Work the plan. You can change your plan where you need to. Just because you said something six months ago doesn't mean you have to stick to it. It means you can change it if it needs changing. All right? Loop back round and update it regularly. Make it a working document. All right? So you need to have that plan. All right? Have a look at what you need to move forward. All right? You know, make, answer questions like, you know, do you want to manage people? Yes or no. In which case, that will have an impact on how your business looks. And yes, you might still be feeling a little bit nervous, but some of the best advice I've ever been given all right, feel the fear and do it anyway. All right, even if you're a little bit scared, just just do it anyway. You 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 won't regret it. All right, some of the best advice I've ever given has stood me in good stead over the years. My business plan, I, I kind of break it down into into quite a large document. It's quite it's, it's quite a large document now, but it's been it's been going for for fifteen years, and we look at one, three, and five years ahead. There's no point getting five years is probably a little bit sort of like. Um, lacking detail because you know who knows what's going to happen in five years time but definitely this one to three with the end goal in mind can be really really useful and we set goals every year and revisit them every sort of quarter to make sure we are on target right so have a plan know what you want to get to right you start with the end in mind and believe you can do it and you will get there all right then you need to understand what problems you solve so from my perspective, I've got very good DBA skills, a little bit of development skills. I know I can help businesses manage their SQL Server infrastructure. I know I can help them get the most out of their data. I know I can help them design solutions that will meet their SLE. All right? So we can have a, a, a platform that's available and fast and not causing your users any problems. But understanding the problems that you solve will help you identify your customers. All right? All right, so, so you know, from, from my perspective, helping organizations get the most of their data, help them manage the data platform, help them squeeze every last CPU cycle from their servers, help them migrate to the latest and greatest version. When you understand the problems you solve and you, that you can then understand who has those problems, they're going to become your customers. And going through this process will allow you to target the right potential clients. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, who has the problems you solve? The answer to this question is basically who your clients are going to be. All right, these are the people that are going to be your customers. You need to know who has the problems and who makes those decisions. All right, understand what bothers them daily. All right, uh, what does your ideal client look like? Now, in my case, um, the organisations and how uh, how we target 
uh, and, and identify organizations that we can work with. They're probably not big international global companies. They're probably slightly smaller in scale and, and they're likely or very unlikely to have a full time um, DBA or if they do, they'd only have one and would need some supplementary skills that can help them one or two. All right. But you need to know who has the problem and who makes the decisions. Right, and what does the person who suffers prob uh, from that problem, right, what do they look like? How can you identify them? Right, and when you know that, you will then know who your customers are and that can help when it comes to targeting and promoting your, your products and services to those people. <coughs> you need to plan to manage your business. Right? As I said, you might not want to manage people. Single person consultancy, is the way forward if that's how you feel, right? You might want to take over the world and become the next big four, part member of the big four, big five consultancy firms. You may have a desire to remain technical, and this is why you're doing it, because you don't want to take a managerial job. Um, and you want to maintain your technical skills. Whatever approach you take though, it is vital that you remember, you will have to manage your business, right? Now, this might be, um, well, I, I think the, the key thing here is because you have to manage the business, it's going to mean you're not going to be working with your favorite technology all the time. There will be other things to do, right? Even if there's nobody else working in it, there will be other things that you will need to do. Now, um, a common operating model in the UK in particular, but I think this is probably true across, across the board, is to use a limited company. A limited company model that can protect some of your personal assets like your home but running a limited limited company there are regulatory requirements you will need to adhere to all right so if you're going to start this up it's great there's a whole bunch of responsibility that comes with it you need to manage the business you need to file accounts you need to manage your tax returns you need to register for vat if you take on employees you need all the uh, respective employees insurances along with professional indemnity and public liability and everything else all right there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with uh, managing a limited company now the key here, right? There are some things to do, but you you're not going to do this on your own. Even if you're just a one-person consultancy, engage with people who do the things that you don't like doing. Get yourself a good accountant. Right? A good accountant will give you all the advice you need in terms of managing your uh, your limited company, managing the, managing the business, making sure things get filed on time, making sure all the regulatory requirements are met. Um. And also, I'm going to come back to this in just a short while, but it's, it, it, what I'm saying here is, right, we've all, if, you, if you're coming from a, um, a permanent employee background and you've no doubt come across uh, recruiters um, and agents that are looking to fill positions all the time, well, those recruitments and agents in the UK, they also have opportunities for self-employed people, right, through contracts. So these recruiters and agents, they can now become your sales team. But I'll talk more about that in uh, in just a second. So finding customers, right? Well, that's, that's potentially a problem you're going to run into. How do you how do you approach that? Well, as I just said, recruitment agents, right? They can help, right? They are they can potentially be your skilled um, sales force. Um, do all the other stuff that you're good at. Build content, write blogs, deliver at conferences. Right? You can't really share too much. All that will help raise awareness of what you're doing and pique people's interests. All right, so you build the problem, if you, especially if you build the content for the people that have the problem. So you go through who has these problems, and I guarantee they're not people like you and they're not people like me. They're going to be other people in other jobs doing other things. If you can write content for them, all right, then it will really, really help generate interest in, in what you do. And you can network as well, but perhaps not as you know it. All right, so using these skilled salespeople, I talked about recruiters, right, being agents. These are now your sales force. Build relationships with them. All right, having that relationship can be really good. If, if an opportunity or contract comes across their desk and you've got that relationship with them, then I guarantee they will reach out to you first as last because people buy from people, which I will allude to and mention next as well. All right? They're called recruiters in the world of permanent employment. They're called agents in the contracting and consultancy world. And these people, they, you know, nobody likes cold calling. These people can make the calls. They can phone people up. 
Right, they get good at getting your foot in the door. The onus is still going to be on you to close the sale, which is possibly the most difficult bit. Um, but getting your foot in the door, once you get in the door, you can talk to people about the problems you solve and the stuff that you're very comfortable with. And if you're, if you, if, if the problems you can solve match the problems they have, then the chances are you're going to get yourself, uh, your first piece of business. And then build a brand, build a network. As I said, people buy from people. Okay, they buy from people that they know. So if you start writing blogs and creating content and creating YouTube videos or whatever, don't just do one. Don't don't you know? I'm going to do all three. Then you want go. If you write blogs regularly, that's fantastic. If you make YouTube videos, that's fantastic. If you do both, that's brilliant. All of those though help build your brand, brand and build your reputation. All right. So share what you know, and by doing that, the people who read it, they're going to think that they know you. Because they're reading what you write. I bet most of you think you know Brent Ozar or Steve Jones or, or, or Amit, all those people sharing, um, their content. You may never have met them in your life, but you will guarantee you will, you, you will think you know them, right? Even if perhaps you don't. And then create content for your customer, right? Your blogs, your, your presentations, um, share your opinions on social media. Use LinkedIn, but you need to use LinkedIn a little bit more. Uh, you need to be quite effective with LinkedIn, right? The LinkedIn call pitch doesn't work, right? So if you've identified your customer, that's great. And reaching out with them and connecting with them on LinkedIn, that's fab as well. But if they click accept and you instantly send them a call pitch, they're just going to, they're just going to ghost you, right? Because that's, there's nothing more annoying on LinkedIn, but there are some things you can do on LinkedIn that can really help. And I've got, if, if you go on to getanalyst.com and look up, um, the LinkedIn pod, we can help amplify your content that you share on there. Have a read of that. That might be something that's worth joining for you if you're, if you're working in the data platform community. If you've got Sales Navigator or some of the premium features of LinkedIn, you can search for your ideal customers. You can save them in um, in lists and accounts. And you can follow what these people do on LinkedIn. And then you can do things to build that relationship. Right? You can like, you can comment on posts. Right? The old connect and pitch that has very minimal success and I would avoid, I would suggest you stay away, uh, from that. But identifying who these people are on LinkedIn, creating content that suits their need and helps solve the problems that they have will very much help, uh, bring, 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 bring you and your business to their attention. The LinkedIn cold pitch doesn't work, right? But all of this, the blogs, the presentations, the talks at conferences, sharing your content, sharing your opinions on Twitter and LinkedIn, um, building your network on LinkedIn all builds your brand um, and it builds the brand with people who are going to be buying your products, which can only help when it comes to sales. <coughs> so we are going to need some sales, some sales collateral, collateral, right? Whether that's a sales document. Sometimes if you're dealing with recruiters or agents, right, and they come from the permanent world, they will call this a resume or CV. I call it a sales document. The purpose of this sales document isn't necessarily to detail all your work in life or work in history, right? The purpose of this document is to showcase to the person with the problem how you can solve their problem, right? So this document needs to be targeted. If a recruiter or agent phones you up and says, I've got this person, they need uh, someone with skills in SQL Server to do X, then that document needs to say, well, I've, I can do this, 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 and this, and I've done this here, 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 and here, and these are the outcomes. And then you're showing that you've been able to solve that problem with a positive outcome. And it's demonstrating that you solved that problem. So target the sales document or your CV and resume if you're using it to that opportunity. And then the content you create, right? It all makes good web collateral, all very good for search engines. So if you write stuff and share, uh, it'll, it'll definitely, um, Write, write, write your blog on your website, write your content for your website, share on social media. It'll drive people to your website and people will keep coming back. Right. So the content can do the selling for you. Right. Because it shows that you can obviously solve the problem that they have. If you Google something and your blog comes up and they read it and they go, Oh, okay. That's fab. Now let's just say this person, they're not a SQL server expert. They're not, you know, they're not an expert in your domain. But they find your content and they say you can do it. And it's like, do you know what? I've really got all this going on here. Why don't we just get this person in to help us fix it? All right. Um, and you know, I, I've, I've had clients come, I've had very lucrative opportunities come my way off the back of my 
blog content. I've had a client for the last 15 years who, who phoned me up and said, can you come and do this for us? Clearly from the blog, uh, from your blog, you can do all of it. And we've had a very long relationship for the last uh, 12, 13 years as a, as a direct result. All right. So make sure that all your, all your sales collateral are targeted to the problems that you solve. And if you've got a specific problem for a client, make sure that the collateral you provide is extremely targeted to meeting their problem. Go to the sales meeting, listen to the problem. In that sales meeting, sometimes that's called an interview, you can even suggest a high level answer to the problem. Maybe do it like this, 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 and this. And they will take that away and they will be very grateful and, and they will also then be very keen to engage with you. And then we're gonna talk about networking, all right? You will need to network, but perhaps not as you know it, right? So if you're thinking of using your technical skills, you're gonna build a business like Berry. She's made the decision to quit the world of permanent work and start contracting and, and consulting for herself. It can get a little overwhelming about what to do and when to do it, all right? So <clears throat> what, what, what I wanna talk about here really is, is the networking side of that, right? Which as a business owner, you're gonna to need to do in some shape or form, but it does come in a variety of different forms and flavors. And it depends on you as an individual as to the networking method you're going to use. All right. <coughs> now, if you think networking is um, a problem for you, and that's not uncommon with people who, you know, it's not uncommon for, for, for people to feel that, and particularly true with people who work in technology to feel a little bit apprehensive about the prospect of networking. And you do have the traditional networking, you know, where um, you meet in a networking group, maybe over drinks, but usually the aim of the meeting is to meet with like-minded people, perhaps in different industries and sectors, so you can explain what you do. So you need to know your elevator pitch and you need to know your unique selling point. Um, and you get to know people and they get to know you and you build that relationship. People buy from people, they can be, uh, it, it can be an opportunity, right? But if that's not for you and you'd rather not do that, you don't have to either, right? Social media gives a lot of opportunities for you to network. You can engage with people who might be interested in your services, they might post something interesting that you can comment on. You can post something interesting that may interest them and you start a conversation. All right, so you can target your customers. You can use Sales Navigator um, if you're using LinkedIn. You can identify those customers and then you can like and comment and start conversations with them based on what they share. Now, it sounds simple. Perhaps it's a little bit trickier than it sounds. Because right? what I mean by this, when you engage with people on social media, often you find the people you engage with are people like you. Right, so they've got similar skills, similar interests, similar abilities. Right, and they might be they might even be trying to do um, similar things to you. Right? And engaging with similar people to you, it's not a bad thing, right? But you just need to make sure these are not the people that are going to buy from you. So you just need to make sure you also engage with people who need your services and they might not be the same people that are in your network. So it's a little bit harder than it sounds. So if you do it with, with okay, I, I need to connect with these people in mind, and you've identified your customer, you will help build those relationships. And then you can do things like content networking. I said about creating blogs and YouTube channels and things like that. You're starting your business, you're gonna need a web presence, you're gonna need social media. Right? You might be writing a blog already, you might be creating those YouTube videos, you might be presenting and speaking at community events and conferences. This does a fabulous job in raising your profile, you combine it with social media, and you can expand your reach greatly. But you can take that a stage further and you can engage your potential clients through your blog or podcast or YouTube channel um, and even speak at events together, all right? Um, so you can, you, you can invite them to be involved in your content creation. It's really a really great icebreaker. And inviting potential clients onto your podcast to be your guest, all right? It, it allows you to build that relationship. There's no hard sell. Um, so whether it's you know, writing content for your blog or interviewing on a blog or being a guest on your podcast, there's no hard sell. The, the, the guest usually likes it. It's a win-win, right? And then you instantly build that relationship and they get to know you. So it works really well because ultimately people do business with people they know and trust, right? They do business with people they consider friends. Now, so it doesn't matter the size of your business. Right, you need to expand your network and turn those people into friends that either need um, need your help to run their business or they need your services. And sometimes those people are not always obvious. 
So the question of when to network, I think the best time to network is when you don't, uh, when, when you're so busy, you've got so much work on, you don't need any more work. That's probably the best time because if you're doing it when you need work and you need a sale, it's not, it's, it, 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 there's pressure on that networking, right? So when you don't need to do it is usually the best time. And I know, <clears throat> I, I know I, 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 I'm not a psychologist by, by a long way, right? and I, but I do want to just come back to the introvert, extrovert scale or spectrum, right? Different personality types, people are going to be on um, on that scale and uh, you know I'm not I'm not an expert in this but it, uh, being an introvert or an extrovert doesn't make you particularly good at networking either way right there's no right or wrong approach right being an introvert you might prefer to deliver a talk on something you know a lot about and then the people who come and talk to you are people who are really interested in your product and service and if you're an extrovert and like to be you know let's call it the life and soul of the party um, they might thrive off that interaction but that doesn't necessarily make them the best at uh, the best networkers either because ultimately you've got to be able to show that you can solve the problem all right so how you approach networking really does it really does come down to your own preferences and your own choice and all i'd say there is do what works for you try a few different different types of networking and see how you get on so all right build a business build a plan answer the questions what does my client look like what problems do i solve what's my solution worth what does success look like for me where do my where do my ideal clients hang out is there any seasonality to the life cycle of what i'm selling and in contracting there is and in training there is but there are different times get help from people with complementary skills get yourself a good accountant be a leader write a plan and act on it and you can build a business all right, so going through that, it'll help you understand your customer, your solution, your market, your goals, and it'll set you on the way to building a successful business. And always remember, ask for help from people when you need it. All right, you can build a business. What is stopping you? Now, uh, we'll head on over to the, the question section in just a bit, but I'd like to give a big thank you as we come to the end of this now. Just like Barry Wand, you can build a business. And if you want to ask some questions after, um, I'm going to be around uh, to answer those for you but as we just draw this to a close a big thank you to uh, the data platform virtual summit big thanks to amit for uh, and his team for organizing um you can win some prizes so you can post a selfie and a hashtag with uh, dps 2022 please do fill in your feedback session please visit the sponsors and exhibitors and you can follow uh um, at the data geeks and at data ai summit on twitter Thank you very much for listening. It's been a pleasure. My name's Gethin Ellis, uh, and I'll take your questions uh, online shortly. Mm -hmm.